Okay, welcome to our Bible study. Mm -hmm. Wow, I think uh, we definitely have much more people today than when we started. <laughs> this is our final Bible study of the semester. I know you guys have finals next week. So anyways, uh, we've had a, a wonderful semester. Uh, I think we started with the book of Exodus, right, to show us. Because the book of Exodus is a story, seemingly. But actually, in that story, you can find out that it actually matches our Christian experience. From being enslaved in Egypt, being saved by God through the, the, the Passover lamb, eventually fleeing Egypt, crossing through the Red Sea of baptism, and going in the wilderness, have so many experiences. So, But... The most important thing to realize about that experience in Exodus is that God did not just save his people for the sake of just getting them out and then, okay, have a wonderful life. That's not God's intention. God saved his people from the slavery in Egypt so that they, he could bring them into the good land. For what? With the view that eventually... In that good land, they will build up God's house. Okay? So that on the earth, God can have a place to be with his people. Amen. All right? Um, God is in the heavens. No problem there. But God doesn't want to stay in the heavens. He wants to be with us, with that's his right. people. That's right. Okay? So that's why the story in Exodus... Actually, the getting out of Egypt, go, crossing the Red Sea, and all the miracles and all the plagues that happen, that's only about half the, the book. Once you get into the wilderness, there's another half there talking about their experience. And for sure, a lot of chapters talking about the tabernacle that God wanted them to build. That tabernacle was God's house so that God could actually be there with them to meet with God's people on the earth. Okay, so that kind of segues into our second part of our Bible study series on the church. Okay, and whenever you hear the word church, I don't know what goes through your mind. There's a lot of concepts, a lot of ideas. To some, the church is, oh, that building there, or that building there. There's a lot of churches on this street. Have you ever seen those? This on 5th Street, on 11th Street, and, you know, many different flavors. So to us, maybe we think church is like that. To some, they don't really care that much about the church. It's just me and Jesus. I got a personal relationship with the Lord. Forget about the church. I'll just, it's just me and God. So some people are in, in that realm. But we have to realize what is on God's heart today. If you were to ask God, Lord, what's on your heart today? What are you doing today? You know what he would say? You know what? I am building my church. And, he pro and that was the, the greatest prophecy in the, in the New Testament. And it's still being fulfilled today. Right? And we'll talk about that. So the church is very important. But what is the church? Mm -hmm. We have hundreds, if not thousands of years of history, of, of, of church history. Hundreds of years of church history. It's gone through a lot of things. Right? And you may, so, uh, which church should I go to? That's another question. Right? Um, I remember one time I, I met you know, somebody on the street, and he found out I was a Christian. So he's like, oh, oh, you're a Christian? I'm a Christian too. And he asked, what kind of Christian are you? What do you mean by that? Eventually, I, I, I realized what he meant was, are you, are you Baptist? Are you Catholic? Are you Presbyterian? Or what kind of Christian are you? To me, that was a really strange question. Because there's no such thing in the Bible. In the Bible, a Christian is somebody who's born of God. A believer I had received God's life so so there's a lot of concepts that's why we need to come back to God's Word 
Because eventually, God's word is the authority, and we have to practice what the Bible speaks. Right? Again, a lot of things are formed by tradition, by culture, by history. But at the end of the day, none of those matter. What matters is God's word. That's the authority by which we, you know, we know the Christian life and the Christian experience. Why? Because the Bible tells us. In the same way, we know what is the church. Why? Because the Bible reveals it. So these last few Bible studies, number one, what is the church? The church is the house of God. And the house also means the household. So it's not just, actually it's not at all a physical building. What makes up the church is the household of God. That means we are God's family. You know what happened when you received, the, when you prayed, you opened up your heart to receive the Lord Jesus? Lord Jesus, I receive you. What happened? You are born of God. Who is your dad? God. That's also why we call one another brothers and sisters. Why? Because we have the same life as the Father. That's right. Every born again, is that born again? What does that mean, born again believer? That means you're born of God. God is your dad. So if your dad is God and my dad is God, guess what? We're brothers. That's right. Shania, we're sisters. What is the church? The church is the household of God. Wow. So if you're born of God, you are part of the church because you are the household of God. Household of the faith. Okay? Last week, another illustration of the church is the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Caleb gave us a, a pretty good review. We are all members of one body. Mm -hmm. And who's the head? Christ. Again, these are all verses that you can go back to our previous Bible studies and all the material there. The, the head of the church is Christ. And the church is the body of Christ. And as a body... If I had one head, how many bodies should I have? Just one. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. So there's no local body here and there or a body here? No. There's one head, right? That's right. Guess what? There should only be one body or else that'd be like a grotesque monster. That's right. Right? That, that's terrible. No. The one head has one body. Mm -hmm. The one body has many members and that's all of us. Amen. And, you know, I don't know what I am. Maybe I'm a thumb. And maybe you're an elbow. Mm -hmm. And maybe somebody's an eye. Can, can the thumb say to the eye, well, because I'm, you know, I'm not an eye, I'm, I'm no good. Right? The eye is important. I can see with the eyes. Right? But what if you have an itch in your ear? Then you need the finger. That's right. The function. I mean, have you ever had an itch in the ear and it's just so annoying? So this actually can shepherd the whole body by doing this. Wonderful function. How can I pick up, try to pick up this piece of paper without a thumb? Mm -hmm. it, right? Difficult. So every member has a function. Every member is indispensable. I like that word. Right? Which member of your body you can do without? You'll just cut it off and throw it away. No. So when God looks us, uh, at us, he needs all of us. Okay? That's the body. Amen. Now today, um, we will talk about, there's a universal and then there's a local aspect of the church. So we'd like to get a little bit more practical today. Um, do you know the very first mention of the word church in the whole Bible? It's in Matthew 16, 18, and I put it down. What about let's read that verse together? Matthew 16, 18. And I also, I also say, say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and then the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The very first mention of the, Bible, of the word church in the whole Bible. What is the context here? Right before the Lord said this, he actually asked the disciples, he took them away, 
And he asked them, some of his close disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? And some, then, then, well, some say you're like a prophet or you're Elijah or some other important person or whatever. And the Lord asked them, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And you know what? Peter got a revelation. He's like, bing! Peter said, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. That's right. And you know what? The Lord immediately says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father revealed that to you. And then what did he say after that? And I also say to you, you are Peter. He changed his name. You're no longer just Simon. You are Peter, a stone for, for God's building. That's right. And upon this rock, not, not Peter, but what is the rock? The revelation that Jesus is the Christ. Right? In Corinthians it says, There is no other foundation on which we lay to build the church. Christ is the only foundation. So if you see Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, good enough. The Lord says, On that rock, I will build what church? The Episcopalian church? The Lutheran church? What kind? My! The church does not belong to any organization, any creed, any person, any pastor. I will build my church. How many churches does Jesus have? One. That's it. So universally, in its essence, there is only one church in the whole universe. Why? Because God only has one people. Right? That's right. Okay. Now, this matter of being one is very important. So the next point here is says we should be diligent to keep the oneness of the Spirit in the Lord's one body. Okay, so let's read that verse, Ephesians uh, 4, 3. Let's just read 4, 3 first. Being, Being diligent to, to keep, keep the oneness of the Spirit in the uniting bond of peace. Now, it didn't say, go find it. It says, keep it. That's right. That means you already have it. What makes us one in the Lord's body? The Spirit. When we are born of God, we the Spirit came into us. That Spirit is our oneness. We do not become one by, well, let me see, what, how, what kind of theology do you have? And what kind of translation? And what kind of, you know, that doesn't make us one. That just, we just fight and debate when you get into that realm. What makes us one is drinking the Spirit. Just like that song we were singing. I'm so happy in this lovely place, in the garden of God's grace, right? There's flowing, there's water, there's the tree of life. When we are enjoying God, enjoying the Spirit, guess what? That makes us one. So if you are not enjoying the Lord, you're not exercising your spirit, praying, and being filled with Him in the Word, don't, don't talk about the church, because guess what? You, all, you will just fight until no end. What do we need to be diligent? Keep the oneness of the Spirit. Now, let's read this together. The, the next verse. The, the Lord's uh, uh, mathematics, as long as you count to one, you're good enough. Okay, verse four. One, one body and one Spirit, even as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You realize here, God just wants one. <laughs> one body. That's why there's only one spirit. There's one Christ. Even there's one hope of your calling. There's one God. Amen? Believe me. 
Oneness is very, very important to God. All right. Now, how does the Lord produce such a oneness? Because, okay, let's, let's be honest, right? Let's look at the situation today among Christians. Even among us. Are we always one? Do we have strife amongst ourselves? There's debates, there's arguments. There's some wars fought among Christians even. So it seems like instead of oneness, we have division. We have fighting. We have strife. Okay? Now we have to realize, how did the Lord deal with all of the... And actually, what is the cause of the fighting? Okay, let's read this verse. Ephesians 2, 15 and 16. Abolishing in his flesh the law of the commandments in ordinances that he might create the two in himself into one new man, so making peace. Okay, let's stop there. What is an ordinance? Anybody know? Mutual. Huh? Mutual. Okay, I mean, it, basically, you know, the, the Old Testament, God gave them the law, but eventually out of the law, there was a lot of ordinances that came out. These are a lot of rules and regulations. Very different sets of how we live and how we worship. Okay, so I'm looking at this room. There's all kinds of variety here. Yeah. Right? There's Korean, Chinese, American. Are you from Ohio? Yeah. Oh, so Ohio. Oh, okay, we got a native. And then we got Ethiopian from Taiwan. You were born here, but right? But Taiwan? No, you were born in Taiwan, weren't you? Taiwan. We got Puerto Rican. Another Taiwan, we got Texan, mm -hmm. we got Iranian, mm -hmm. another Korean, and mm -hmm. somebody from Indonesia, Singapore, and then you just moved from Canada, right? And you're Ohio, all right? And this this guy, he's mixed, <laughs> half and half, <laughs> half American, half half American. Singapore. <laughs> okay. Again, so you yeah. just go down the line. What what is going right. on here? We yeah. have black, we have white. Yeah. We have Filipino, mm -hmm. right? Hawaii. <laughs> so this is like the Rainbow Coalition here. Wait. So there's like <laughs> so many, so many different, but how can we be one? I mean, just even how we live, how you eat, very different. Some of you may even live together with a bunch of other brothers. That's not so easy, is it? Why? What makes it not so easy? It's called ordinances. We have different sets of rules of how we live. Right? Um, when you walk in the house, should you take off your shoes? Or should you keep it on? Right? So some people, dude, you, you're stepping all over the mud and all that. You, don't put that into my bedroom. Take it off. The this, son this is like, that, that's just weird, man. I, I don't want my, my toes <laughs> exposed. Just simple thing about shoes. You have two different ordinances. And believe me, you can have a serious fight about this. I'm married over 20 years. Most of my fight my wife is because of ordinances. I grew up a certain way. Actually, I'm Chinese, born in the Philippines. My wife, a pure American from Michigan. It's okay, she, she got an OSU degree, right? <laughs> Even then, you're from Michigan. Ordinance. <laughs> we, we find ways to hate the other people. Racists can be like that, right? I mean, right now, right, Iran, I mean, there's like bombs going off, like people shooting missiles at each other. For some reason, the fallen human being, because of ordinances, finds so many ways to hate each other and to kill each other. 
no different in the church. Right? When you come to a church meeting, should we just be solemn and just pray? Or, praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hey, Daniel. <laughs> like, whoa, bro, you don't tone it down. So are we the loud church or should we be in the quiet church? Should we use guitar? Or what about tambourine? What about, oh, that, that's too worldly. We need to have a piano. Or even more official, or organ, organ. What instrument you use in a, meeting, in a church meeting can divide the church. That's right. Think about it. And then today, there's my race, black church, white church. There's not only Chinese church, there's a Taiwanese church. Don't mix the two. They hate each other. <laughs> Different. Then there's Ethiopian church. Puerto Rican church, Hispanic, whatever. So, you think the Lord is happy about all of these ordinances that have come in to really put people, like separating people from one another? Okay, you know what the solution to that is? This is what the solution is. The Lord on the cross, it says here, He abolished in His flesh the law of the commandments and ordinances that he might create the two in himself in one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both. He's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles here. To God, in one body, through the cross, having slain the enmity by it. A lot of us know that the Lord on the cross, he terminated all our sins. He terminated our problem between us and God. Do you realize on the cross, he also terminated all the ordinances that separated us from one another? Think about that. So the Lord dealt with all of these things on the cross. Okay? Huh. I think we have to open to the Lord. There's things within us. We, there's strife. Cannot get along. You're about to find out. You're about to move in with some brothers. Mm. Right? <laughs> we love the brothers until you have to share the bathroom with them. Mm. You love the brothers until somebody ate your cereal. Or somebody didn't wash their dishes. Or somebody used their, their shoes to walk into your room. Right? Then we have problems. Ordinances were nailed on the cross by the Lord Jesus. Amen. And this is what the Lord... This is how the Lord accomplished such a peace and oneness. Okay? So, the church is universally one, but, but we still need to practice a church life. Right. right? Look at this verse here. It says, Matthew 18, 17. This is the second mention of the church. It says here, the story behind this is, if, you, if somebody sins against you, you need to go to that person and say, hey, you did this. Can we resolve the issue? And it says, the Bible says that if he does not hear you, you need to take two others to be with you to, as a witness. And then it says there, um, in verse 18, 17, it says, and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. So if the church is universal, who are you going to tell? So eventually, locally, where you are, there needs to be the church so that we can tell it too. We can have fellowship. We can gather together. Okay? So the church universally is just one. But locally, this is very practical. There's people. I can say, oh, I'm one with the brothers and sisters in Tokyo, Japan. And that's true. That's a reality. But unfortunately, I can't have coffee with the brothers there because it would be a very expensive trip mm -hmm. to have coffee and fellowship. But in Columbus, Ohio, look at all you brothers and sisters. I could fellowship with all of you. Okay? Now, but even then, still, how do we practice? Now, again, I'd just like to sh 
the, the Bible is very, very clear in how we practice the church life. Okay? Basically, let me read this. In order to preserve the oneness among all the believers in the Lord's one body, the Spirit led the apostles and the early believers to meet as the church based on the city in which they lived and not to divide or denominate themselves from one another. So if you live in Jerusalem, right? And on, on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the gospel. 3,000 got saved. Guess what? They all are the believers. Then they begin to meet as the church in Jerusalem. Later on, there were Paul preached the gospel in many different places. In whatever city they were in, they were just the believers in that city. Okay? So let's say... This is Columbus. I don't know. These are all believers, Christians. There's probably a many thousand believers in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's just say this thing. All right. All of these believers make up the church. In Columbus. Right. And actually, the church in Columbus is not even your name. It's just a designation of where you live. If you were in, let's say, Cincinnati, they just happened to meet in Cincinnati. But all the believers there actually are one with all the believers here. Right. Right? Now, what happened? Because I, we can, there's no time to get into all the history. If you look at church history, a lot of different things, um, because of man's sorry neglect and, and unfaithfulness to the word, things happen, and then all of a sudden, instead of all of us meeting as the church in this city, and all these believers are actually one with the church in this city, and all the cities on the whole earth, that's why you have one body, right? Well, you know what? I like to meet with the church of all the bald people. I feel more, more, more at home. What more with them, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I, we meet at the church. We, you know, we just wear pants, shorts. <laughs> this is being silly, but oh, you know what? This is a church. We, we only, we only use um, organ music. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't do any of this contemporary yeah. nonsense. You know. And then this is the church of you know we. we you name it. God does not like pepperoni pizza. He just wants one. Mm -hmm. So what happened? The one becomes segmented into many. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, we, we have by we have not just Africans, but you got the Ethiopian, the Nigerian, the Ghanaian. You get the Chinese, you get Taiwanese, Korean, and then what else? Mm -hmm. Eventually, we don't have what the Bible talks about anymore. We have something else based on preference, based on culture, yeah. right? So you realize this is a battle today. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be faithful to what is on God's heart concerning the church. And what is the point there? It's not that this is better than this one, this one. No. The whole point of why God wants to do this is He wants to keep all of His believers in one. Right. Oneness is the most important thing in the, in the church. That's actually the ground of oneness is the ground by which we stand on. Mm. Okay? Remember, be diligent to keep the oneness of the Spirit. Wow. Yes. Amen. And again, I didn't make this up. Let me just read some verses to you. This is just what the Bible says. Acts 8.1 And there occurred in that day a great persecution against the church which is in Jerusalem. The church there. Which one? There is none. It's just the church there in Jerusalem. Acts 13.1 Now there in Antioch, in the local church, there were prophets and teachers. Which label? What kind? No, it's the church that was there. 
1 Corinthians 1, 2. To the church of God, which is in Corinth. That's the city. Okay? Well, here's a good one. Revelation 1, 11. The Lord is speaking to John, saying, What you see, write in a scroll, and send it to the seven churches. Which seven churches? The Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Lutheran, what? Episcopalian, Pentecostal. To where? To Ephesus, that's a city. To Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Those are seven cities in Asia Minor. So when he says send it to the seven churches, he sent it to seven cities. Why? Because in that, in that city, there's only one church. To keep the oneness of all the believers in that city. Okay, these two verses you need to put together. Acts 14, 23. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church. This is what the apostles did. In every church, they appointed elders, some older ones, to, to, to shepherd the believers in that church. But look at Titus 1, 5. It says, For this cause I left you in Crete, that you might set in order the things which I have begun, that remain and appoint elders in every city. So every church, every city is the same. That's right. You got it? Mm -hmm. So again, this is just the revelation in the Word. And I think it's good for us to go to the Lord. Lord, you know, I'd like to practice what the Bible says. Does that make sense? And eventually, as members of the Lord's body, we should never justify any division in His body. And we also need to receive one another just as Christ has received us. So let's read 1 Corinthians 12, 25. That there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same care for one another. Very clear, right? And this is very important, Romans 15, 7. Therefore, receive one another, even as Christ also received you to the glory of God. Amen. So, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions maybe percolating within you. And I think it, it does warrant for us to have much more fellowship, maybe even in small groups, uh, not just today, but in the, in the future. What does this look like? How do we practice this, right? But I think it's just good for us to realize what the Bible says, and then we need to open to the Lord to practice what the Bible says. Amen. So what about let's read the the um, the focus together. The Lord's desire is for all of His believers to be the one church as His body, to express Him on the earth without any division. He produced such a oneness by terminating all of the ordinances that divided men from one another on the cross. All the believers should receive one another and just simply as the church in the city where they live in order to maintain the oneness of the Lord's body. Sorry, they got a little bit long-winded, but I hope you received something, right? Um, and again, the main thing is we, we, we receive one another, we care for one another, right? So that the Lord can have a way on the earth to preserve the oneness of all of his people.